URC folks, Leinster up against the Dragons, uh, kind of an expected result, I guess, 43 points to 40, we'll go over some of the key events and stats, uh, you guys can let us know your thoughts, I, I like watching Leinster when it's like a game like this where they've got their Irish internationals are all out and I'm going to see some guy I've never seen before, like some six foot 20 year old almost 100 kilos like this dude Tector comes off the bench at the end I mean not his first game but dude's played like I don't know half an hour of URC rugby before he got a little bit of extra time in this one um, and to be honest the Dragons weren't that bad they just couldn't finish off any tries especially in the first half but um, yeah I should say prior to this game I watched like the first half of Cardiff and Benetton and I was getting myself back on the Owen Lane train but I didn't manage to finish the game but the start of that game was absolute madness. But for this one, um, I mean, it started with Leinster, didn't it? Harry Byrne within the first few minutes. I mean, the Dragons a little bit uh, trying to run the ball out of your own. I mean, they were trying to get out of their own goal area because they didn't want to go for a goal line dropout. But sometimes offloading the ball on your own goal line when you're away at Leinster is probably not advisable. So, yeah, obviously they coughed the ball up <clears throat> and uh, Harry Byrne was able to finish off a try. Uh, so yeah, they missed the conversion, but uh, well, they got the conversion. So it was seven points to seven points to nil early. It was the Cardiff game where they missed the first conversion. Uh, John McKinney, the hooker, got absolutely smashed when they passed the ball uh, above his <laughs> above his head, and the uh, the Dragons defenders decided to drive right into his ribs, which looked pretty uncomfortable. Uh, the Leinster 13 Turner man, that guy's got some gas, but the Dragons defense actually managed to hold. For a substantial period of time, which seemed, you know, unusual. Often, Lens to just go into this kind of inevitable, relentless phases mode where you can't stop them. But the Dragons managed to hold out, which was kind of pleasing. And then for a while, they actually seemed to be on top. Well, not on top on the scoreboard, but they just had some position, they had some territory down um, down Lens to see. They went through like 13 phases. Uh, but they would eventually just like try to push the offloads a bit too much, trying to crack that Lens to defense. Um, so yeah, a bit of a let off, but I guess the Leinster defense wasn't breaking. So it's like you have to do something. So you end up forcing the pass. So I still feel like a bit of patience was needed, but they, um, they ended up opting for a three pointer, but it was pretty windy and they ended up missing it. So a little bit frustrating because I mean, if you're going to go down, if you're going to go over to Dublin, you, you need to take all the points you can get and try to rattle them as much as you can. So I thought the 13th phase was encouraging, but then the missed penalty yeah, they had another chance a few minutes later. We're talking just before the 20-minute mark. Um, they had a mall chance, but then I think it was Maloney that managed to turn it over at mall time. So it's another missed chance for the Dragons. The Dragons like had to score another 5-meter line out. This is on like 23 minutes. They're still down Leicester's end. Um, they threw a long ball, I guess, to try and avoid that initial, uh, you know, Leicester shove on D. But uh, Moriarty caught it initially, but then kind of fumbled it. So... Yeah, multiple chances let off for for um, for the Dragons guys, man. Like you can't you can't go to Leinster and not take any of those chances. You need to get virtually all of them, and they weren't getting nothing. So yeah, Leinster's defense managed to hold off, and then like typical <laughs> typical Leinster fashion, um, when the Dragons had a scrum, it was like a two pass move, and then Luke McGrath, who had a great game, it's brutal that guy doesn't have more international caps. Uh, Luke McGrath manages to intercept the thing, kind of against the run of play. But I mean, you could argue that the defensive effort from the Leinster boys causes the Dragons to push that pass. So 14-0 uh, to Leinster. That being said, the Dragons did manage to get on the board, man. Some wide ball was kind of pushing right, and then Roger Williams snuck left from the side of a ruck. It was a good, good move, like smart play, 14-7. Suddenly, you're only seven points behind. And you've had a decent period of uh, pressure. You probably should have more points if you're the Dragons. But, I mean, Lens to do what they do, man. You score, they score one pretty much straight back. Um, Dragons made the mistake of conceding a penalty. And then doubled down by getting free kicked at line-out time. So Luke McGrath, who was looking to keep the game moving, he tapped it. And uh, they eventually managed to get old uh, Reese Ruddock to go over. So, what, three minutes after... The Williams try, probably less if you include the conversion time. So pretty much, uh, yeah, 
back to that that lead that Leicester had initially established. Um, and then Leicester managed to kind of double down before halftime by going through a load of phases. Um, Harry Byrne got it pretty much as the clock was in the red. Uh, I mean, it had been coming McGrath uh, in the build-up again. Uh, I think Deeney was at the big lock. <laughs> Who thought he could go all the way, but no, not quite. But yeah, man, a bunch of phases. So um, yeah, 26 points to 7 at halftime. I mean, the clean breaks is 5-zip. Defenders beaten is 17-8. So, I mean, the, the Dragons guys have had a bit more territory. But yeah, it's that. It's that X factor being able to finish those moves. I mean, the second half starts a bit tentative until you see, like, release to his club from Ireland, Jordan Lama. Um, just, like, go blindside from a ruck. Absolute wheels on that guy. And the step, the step is beautiful um, to give himself the space to finish the move with the defender coming across. Oh, it's a great play. Um, the Dragons then did their thing again where they get some position, they go through some phases, 19 phases they go before JJ Hanrahan just ends up chucking the ball into touch and it's another one of those ones where maybe the attack's getting a bit frustrated because you're not able to crack it and um, yeah, they end up losing the opportunity but he made up for it, that old JJ with his face, yes, with his face, a try, a weird try on 63 minutes, JJ Hanrahan Basically, they pass the ball into his face. It looks like his hands go near the ball, but the TMO concludes no um, no definite hand in there. So, like, the ball goes forward off him like a header from football, uh, but there's no hand in it, so it's not a knock-on, and he's able to go through. So that's the key point. If you want to get through that lens to defense, just bash it through with your face. No knock-on, 31-14. Um, and like I said, it was a little bit, got a little bit scrappy. The wind, as I said, was kind of affecting things. There was a few Leinster kicks. Harry Byrne had a couple, and was it Tech there when he came on one? Like, just too big, kicking it dead, because uh, the wind would just, you know, pull it away from them. So, maybe not as clinical as they would have liked, but I mean, they still got uh, another couple of tries. Uh, Russell got one. Uh, that one was the Jimmy O'Brien initial carry which was a pretty sweet little one-two move and then uh, this big dude Tekta man he's only 20 don't know what they're feeding him but he's a big dude um yeah it all started from the Dragons losing their own line out ball uh there was a chip um and then uh, Tekta was the guy who gathered it and just showed a bit of power to finish it off man so yeah kind of unsurprising it's a big old bonus point at the bonus point by half time uh win for the Leinster guys 43-14, their run in the URC goes on. Some of the, the kind of squad players got a bit of a run, which is uh, also really pleasing. I think Rick Reese, Ruddock, the veteran, uh, got man of the match. He was really busy. Possessions 50-50, territory is 57-43 to the Dragons, but run meters 443 to 347 to Leinster. Clean breaks 8-2 to to Leinster. Tackles 166-110, so Leinster had to make more. Um, Dragons, as I said, were able to go through those phases, but it's the kind of X-factor moment that they seem to lack. McGrath, man, 74 meters in a clean break. Uh, Reese Ruddock, four defenders, beaten 14 tackles, one of the top guys. Scott Penny, 20 tackles, though, uh, on defense. Moriarty for the Dragons looked really busy, 62 meters and six defenders beaten. But, um, yeah, good wee crowd. I thought the cardiff Benetton game also had a pretty good crowd, so it's pretty pleasing, kind of in a Six Nations off week. Uh, everyone's getting back into the old URC scene, so really pleasing. But um, yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts on the game. What did you reckon about Leinster's performance? What did you think about the Dragons? Did they maybe do better than 14 points? Or was it just, you know, Leinster's defense kind of keeping them at arm's length for, for large periods of it? Anyway, you guys take care and uh, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.